The Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, played by John Paul Jones. I've been getting a lot of requests for this, and it seems to all center around one reason, the scales. Everyone seems to have a problem with those damn scales. So let's have a look at it, and I'll try to help out with finally mastering that evil section. So the tune is 112 beats per minute, and I'm pretty sure that most of you will be doing just fine with the main riff, but let's take a quick look. It's that good old octave pattern that sounds like this. So here we just have a basic octave pattern on F sharp, so 2nd fret on the E string and 4th fret on the D string. And we're playing this rhythm, and as you can hear there we're using the open E string to bring us back round, so we have the octave, there's the open E and back in, so. Then we also have that A at the 5th fret of the E string, leading down into the E octave. Okay, so that's going to be open E string and then the 7th fret of the A string. And then the A back in again. To bring us back into the F sharp. So that looks pretty easy. Or is it? The problem that you're going to have is actually the same kind of problem that you're going to have with the scales. It's not the fretting hand, it's the picking hand. The picking hand will always be the source of problems when you're getting finger twisted. The key is to always stick to the same finger order, whether you're finger picking or the same order of upstrokes and downstrokes when you play with the pick. So with that octave riff pattern, in terms of the finger picking, I actually start with a different finger to the one that I use on all the repeats after. So I start with the middle finger, the second finger, so we've got two and then two again, so two, two, one, two, one, okay? It always helps to come back onto a shorter finger, so. And then when we hit the open E string, it's going to be the second finger again, so. Then for all the repeats after that, I'm starting with the first finger. Everything else is the same, so one, two, one, two, one. Okay, I just find that if you start with the second finger on the first time, it just, something with the brain, it actually just helps keeping the consistency, so. And you want to keep that finger picking order consistent throughout your practice. So, practice that pattern slowly, keeping the exact same fingering in both hands every time. Remember, if you use different fingers at any point, then you're not practicing the same thing. You want consistency in your practice. So start out really, really slow, focusing on those fingers, and then build up some speed in your own time. You know, away from clicks or drum tracks or anything like that. So. However slow, you have to go <laughs> to make sure you've got that consistency and then build up the speed. Then you can build up speed in your own time and there are three backing tracks over at the Talking Bass website alongside the tab. So we've got 92, 102 and 112 beats per minute. So first let's try that at 92 beats per minute. So just try that octave pattern round and round and round at that tempo until you've got it down. Then you can try at 102 beats per minute. And finally, full speed 112 beats per minute. Once you have that opening down, then you can add the E using exactly the same finger picking. So, you know, you can just work through that. So once you have the opening riff down, then we can try the scale ascents, which sound like this. scales are all mixolydian scales. The mixolydian scale, or mode, is the same as a major scale, but we just flatten the seventh degree. So, as an example, if we were to play a C major scale, 
so that's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C mixolydian would simply be C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, so. So there, for the C mixolydian, we've got third and fifth fret on the A string, then second, third and fifth frets on the D string, and then second, third and fifth frets on the G string. So it's a two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four fingering pattern. So once you know that scale, all we have to do is play three mixolydian scales, A, B, and C, twice on each, always in ascent. And then the final time, we just add that major seventh back into the mix for a little bit of chromatic spunk at the end, so. So we just have that. 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th fret there on the D string for the A, B flat, B natural, C at the end. So there are three things that you need to work on here. One is the fretting hand, two is the picking hand, and three is the combination and coordination of both. And I have to say that even though I teach scales in many, many lessons here on YouTube, I do tend to give a disclaimer that you very rarely have to play full scales in any pop or rock songs. Well, this is an exception. These are complete scales, and if you've watched any of my technique lessons that make use of scales, you should be fine with all of this, but if you haven't practiced your scales, this is a great example of application in a rock tune. So, first of all, in the fretting hand, the fingering will be the same each time. So, like I said, start on the second finger, and then we have one, two, four, and one, two, four. You want the thumb in the back of the neck, you want curled fingers, and you want to be light in your hand, so don't tend up. You always want to be as relaxed as possible. Even that simple tip might help out a lot if, you know, ha you're having problems developing speed for this line. So some of you might also feel like it's a bit of a stretch in the fingers. You know, if you've got small hands or you're just not used to playing stuff like this, don't worry about that. You don't need to stretch the fingers. You don't need to hold that finger there, then that finger there, then, you know, just holding them all in place. You don't need to do any of that. Just shift the hand slightly as you go. So instead of this, you would play this. You're just moving the hand as you go, just pivoting with that thumb, making these small micro shifts. The other general tip here that I'm gonna say over and over again is take it slow. Don't just try playing it full speed. Start out as slow as you need to. Focus on all of these technical aspects that I'm talking about. Focus on relaxing the hand. Focus on the micro shifting. Take it slow and build up slowly. You develop technique at a slow speed, not a high speed. In my opinion, the picking hand is going to be the main problem for most of you. But again, you want to track the fingers at every point. So use the same order of fingers every time, just like we did with the opening riff. So first, just start with the index finger, and then you just alternate all the way. So play up the scale slowly, keeping track of that order. So we're gonna have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, so take note of which finger you're on when you make the shifts. So one, two, one. So when we move to the A string, we're on one. And two, one, and when we reach the D string, we're on the second finger. So, you know, as long as you can just keep alternating the fingers like this, you just have to be aware of which finger you're on as you make uh, the shift. And then you finish on the second finger, which sets you up nicely for coming back down on the first finger. Also, pay special attention to the thumb position. Start on the pickup, then shift it to the E string when you transition to the A string. You can then keep the thumb on the E string while playing up to the top of the line. Then when you come back down, you're gonna be bringing the thumb back to the uh, pickle. You don't have to worry too much about moving the thumb to the A string because the rest stroke there is going to mute the A string anyway. So remember, this is all about good muting and getting a clean tone. Lastly, you need to focus on coordination, ensuring the hands are perfectly synchronized. If they're slightly out of sync, that's when your playing is gonna become sloppy. And as I keep hammering home to you, 
The only way to fix this is to play slowly. Play at a speed that works. When it sounds nice and clean, then you can build up slowly. So, every single one of those notes should work together between the hats. You know, you don't want to be putting the fretting hand down before you pick. They both work in sync. And if you can get a nice, clean tone, then you can start to build up speed. So, in terms of building up speed, yes, you can take the whole thing and then just start very slowly and then just build up speed. But, another way to do this is to actually break it down into smaller chunks. So, you can take maybe the first three notes. That way we've got that transition to the A string and just practice that in isolation. Then add a couple more notes. Start out slowly, paying attention to all of the moves in the hand. And then just build up speed on that chunk. Then add the next transition. Okay, just bringing those string transitions in slowly and gradually. And then just up to that top. Don't jump back down, just play to the top. Slow. Then you can just start to build up speed with the whole thing. Getting used to the transitions. Then once you feel confident playing it away from any tracks without the pressure, then you can try with the backing track. So first of all, let's try 92 beats per minute. Next, let's try 102 beats per minute. Finally, 112 beats per minute. So that's the Immigrant Song. This is a great tune for beginner to intermediate players looking to work on string crossing and scales. You also get to learn your Mixolydian scale that's going to crop up in tons of tunes, even if you don't realise it. Okay, so next week is the 10th anniversary of Talking Bass. So I'm going to be having a bunch of live hangs here on YouTube. We're having a sale on all courses and I'll be presenting a bunch of other interesting surprises both here and at the website. So like this vid, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment to let me know what other tunes are giving you problems. Also, check out the lesson map over at the Talking Bass website where you'll find over 600 video lessons just like this one on every aspect of playing. They're all free and organized for ease of navigation. So go check it out and I'll see you next week.